we always seem to be in a time that makes it very difficult for new properties and brands to have their moment to really flourish and grow. Properties can't just be profitable anymore, but they have to be able to maximize their profits like Marvel or Star Wars. Like why does every single brand have a crock pot nowadays? If I'm a fan of Dragon Ball Z, is the best way for me to express that through owning a crock pot? Look at this crock pot with Chibi Loki. It's low key pretty ugly. Enter Heroescape, a strategy board game that was dropped by Hasbro not for a lack of success, but because they imagined greater success leveraging a brand owned by their once great competitor, Wizards of the Coast, which Hasbro purchased in 1999. Heroescape never became a brand strong enough to have its own crockpot, but even if it did, it probably would compete with the Dungeons and Dragons crockpot. Heroescape is the battle of all time. All time meaning heroes from multiple eras and dimensions get transported to the world of Valhalla and now have to fight multiple creatures and armies. You came to me in a vision, and I have brought you here. There's a T-Rex ridden by an orc, futuristic war machines, samurai, secret agents, World War II soldiers, Marvel Comics, The Incredible Hulk, and of course, the epic winged dragon, Mimring. Live the adventure, play the game. Heroescape. With Heroescape having such an all-encompassing concept, Hasbro pumped out many expansion sets which showed off how big your board could get. It was their own miniature war game, which positioned itself as a simpler version of the much more popular Warhammer 40k. The resizable terrain allows for such imaginative play with plenty of different goals and gameplay variety. Yeah, this is Billiam. As a kid, I loved Heroescape, and growing up to now, I have never gotten into anything else like it. I don't have the money for Warhammer. Give me poor hammer. In college, I made the deal of a lifetime, trading a $20 IKEA side table for hundreds of dollars worth of Heroescape sets. I've been sitting on these ever since, and now I've built the epic Heroescape game board of my dreams. So let's hear about this game that was unfortunately canceled before its time because you know, maybe I would buy a Heroescape crockpot. You already know what time it is. We're talking monsters. We're talking battles. So it's perfect that this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. It has been almost four years since I've taken a Raid sponsorship, so let's take a trip down memory lane to Raid Shadow I cannot believe it's actually been four years. That is so wild. My hair was so short back then. I was such a raid noob. Taking on raid sponsorships back then helped me pay for my college tuition, and I'm finally graduating next month. Thank you, Raid Shadow Legends. Their fourth anniversary is coming up. They're rolling out dedicated offers, free gifts, promo code events, and a brand new fusion event where you get an anniversary themed legendary champion. Got Amazon Prime, great news. You can claim even more rewards. To join this party and to get some pretty awesome bonuses, make sure to click the link in the description or use the QR code on the screen. The bonus is for new players only as a special B-Day package after installation. Scan it to get the epic champion, Kellen? The strike? Come on, you gotta, for Kellen. Hit the link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. Heroescape was initially released in 2004 under Hasbro subsidiary Milton Bradley, known for intellectual games like Scrabble and Hungry Hungry Hippos. Though Milton Bradley had also produced fantasy-based games like Hero Quest, beginning in 1989. The first Heroescape Master Set retailed for about $40 and is titled The Rise of the Valkyrie. Included in the set are numerous hexagonal tiles, all of varying sizes and varieties. You get grass, stone, sand, and clear water tiles, along with 30 minifigures. There are two main types of figures. There are unique hero cards, like Thorgrim, the Viking. But then there are also unique squad cards, like these random Vikings. Squad characters and unique heroes typically have comparable stats, except for the fact that most squad card characters only have one health point, but both kinds of characters have special abilities they can use before, after, or instead of their attack. Building out the game board and drafting your army is what gives Heroescape such insane replay value. Each of the manuals included in the master sets or expansions contain pre-made scenarios and character selections for the game to make diving into Heroescape a little bit easier. You can't just hop in, dragons blazing with memory. And they're both like, he's like, <laughs> Players can decide if they want to play a basic version of a scenario or a master game version. In basic games, characters are pre-selected, but in master games, players get to choose which heroes they want using a draft system. I love Grimnak, this Tyrannosaurus with a little ogre whispering instructions on top of him. Grimnak's ability called Chomp allows him to destroy a character next to him as long as he rolls a 16 or higher. But if it's a squad card character, he auto-destroys him. One, two, 
three, four, five. Blow up, idiot. You fucking idiot, blow up. Memoring the dragon is just a broken character. Like literally they ship it to you broken. You have to assemble it and put it into the game. They've wiped their hands clean of it. Look at this move, the Fireline special attack. He can attack every character in a straight line up to eight spaces ahead or to the side of him. The power, the range, it's all broken. The game uses dice mechanics for initiative and combat. Included is a 20 sided die along with special dice for attack and defense. These help you determine how much damage is taken. Dice have three attack skulls and two defense shields so you get better odds attacking than defending. Heroes like Finn the Viking Champion and Raylin the Kyrie Warrior give stat buffs to characters adjacent to them or in a specified range. Raylin can also fly so she and other winged characters have an easier time climbing terrain. It's like Overwatch, if Overwatch were good. In a basic game the abilities and health bar are excluded. All you have to do is roll higher attack than defense to kill your opponent's piece. Which makes for a much faster game. Yo, Sergeant Drake Alexander is a wild card. His grappling gun allows him to climb 25 levels high. He also has an attack of six. Memoring the dragon has an attack of four. The madman is mad strong. There are tons of little details and rules in HeroScape that help to make it more immersive, including fall damage, moving through water, scaling unique map builds and overhangs, and character line of sight being a mechanic in the game. You have to get down to the board and view the perspective of one character to make sure they can see the other character they're attacking, which is important for ranged attacks. There are glyphs which can be placed around the map to either hurt or help the players, and plenty of unique strategies the players can implement. Look at Nigok Saw. I mean, don't look at him. Don't even go near him. He's one of the many flood-like alien zombies known as the Maro. He's got the Mind Shackle ability. If you roll a 20, he can take over one of your opponent's characters. Nigok Saw Mind Shackled me and now I have to pay for a speeding ticket in Panama City Beach, Florida. There's a lot to keep track of in this game, but we caught on pretty fast. Faster than I drove through Panama City Beach, Florida. Allegedly. While we didn't have every mechanic in the game memorized, it is definitely not overwhelming. The game is very very slow to build momentum, and once characters start engaging, the pace picks up. The included game scenarios are very fun and never last longer than 30 to 45 minutes, a typical board game length. However, if you're doing a custom master game, it's going to last as long as you want it to. And this game has people wanting to continue it to this very day. Created by Craig Van Ness, Robert DeVoe, and Steven Baker, HeroScape reached beyond its target demographic of children by appealing to the adult gamer. It was a pretty big success for a new game. Not slap a sticker on a crockpot big, but you know, successful. The year it launched, Board Game Geek had it featured on their hot games list and over 8,000 users contributed reviews, giving it an average score of 7.4 out of 10. Even fan websites were popping up like heroscapers.com and heroscape.net. That's how you know it's not official. But despite the strong evidence for Heroscape having a big fan base, you cannot convince me that this post about an angry GF being upset about her BF playing Heroscape too much isn't just an industry plant. This is an advertisement, not a real post. I am disturbed that he does not do anything in our house and he does not spend time with me because he's always busy playing HeroScape. He seems attached to it. The girlfriends of his friends are also very angry with them. HeroScape <laughs> may be great, but <laughs> she can't help but to admit, like she has to admit the game is great actually. At Gen Con, one of the biggest board game conventions, fans of HeroScape along with developers of the game played in a tournament until 3 a.m before sunrise even. Get some sleep, play HeroScape in the morning, why don't you? But needless to say, people who worked on the game were pretty passionate about it. The Esoteric Order of Gamers writes a review noting, It's miniature gaming with all the serious mucking about, taken out, and all the fun left in. The perfect beer and pretzels war game. Four and a half plastic hexes out of five. Sure, HeroScape might have been an introductory war game sold on the shelves of Target, Walmart, and Toys R Us, but it was a quality, accessible, and affordable affordable war game. It really offered a creative sandbox for children clamoring to run an army. I love the affectionate name Poor Hammer offering a good comparison to the much more expensive money pit that is Warhammer 40k. Warhammer $40,000 to start, more like it. But HeroScape's shorter lifespan allowed much of its player base to get very creative with the game. Alongside the master set, there were a lot of smaller expansions released for the game. There are a few dozens of these expansions, which included special terrain pieces like forestry, a bridge, snow and ice, lava tiles, and more. They can be purchased from like $13 to $20. I only ever had one 
one of these. It was this one. Orms Return, the Heroes of Laur. Wave two. Hero scapers are like, oh my God, I love Orms Return, Heroes of Laur. Who's Orm? I don't know, but he's coming back, baby. The biggest terrain accessory is certainly the Fortress of Arkairi. It's this big castle and just like all of the other pieces of the game, you can completely customize its layout. Having multiple levels for the characters to do battle on. If you wanted to buy multiple of these castles and combine them, you could. I had an extra door, so our castle has two doors. The door itself has its own card because it can be breached. Buying old new stock of HeroScape sets today, you're gonna have to cough up a lot of money. I've been spending a lot of time just collecting these sets for this video. I feel like I still could have gotten so much more, but then I wouldn't have been able to pay my editors. Instead of trying to be a completionist, I got the next two master sets, which were released in 2007. The first is a Marvel Comics expansion, and then later that year, the Swarm of the Morrow. The Marvel Comics set includes city-themed pieces and 10 different Marvel characters. Doctor Doom, Red Skull, Iron Man, Hulk, The Abomination, Captain America, Venom, Hubaba, the demon from the Epic of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh, Spider-Man, Thanos, and the Silver Surfer. With the game targeted towards such a wide audience, the Marvel set was targeted directly towards kids, and the developers referred to it as Marvelscape. Every single one of the characters are so overpowered, if you try to bring them into a regular game, they will completely unbalance it. Um, boom! Arrivederci. Then releasing that fall, The Swarm of the Morrow was a swamp theme set, which featured new and returning characters with updated looks and slightly different moves. My producer Savannah and I played a few different scenarios that were included with these sets. We wanted to get a feeling for the entire game and sample all of the different characters. HeroScape encourages the players to build a massive board, hodgepodging all of these sets and expansions together. Our massive homebrew game is is everything I ever wanted out of HeroScape when I was a kid. This is fulfillment. It lasted over five hours and it could have gone on much longer. This game's long. Everybody's on the board now. I looked at all my hexagonal pieces and I'm like, hmm, what kind of place can I build with sand, water, swamp, asphalt, <sighs> Florida, a homebrew? to brew my home, it immediately had to feel like the worst place in the world, while still maintaining the integrity of the master game rules. With two full tables, we created a two-tiered map. The lower tier resembles our sunny beaches, swamps, and hot cities. The second tier, Orlando Land, the loud corporate sponsor making everything possible. Raid Shadow Legends Land, coming soon. It took a few days to build out all these pieces together, and once we finished it, we weren't feeling it, scrapped it, and started it over. Rebuilding once again with all of the tweaks we want, just like what must happen to Florida. <laughs> the passionate HeroScape community keeps this game alive today, which is not only exclusive to creating scenarios and custom pieces online, many of which are amazing. Look at these little undead gorillanators sold on Etsy for the game. I love them. And these custom light pillars create such a cool atmosphere. HeroScape community members just popping off with 3D printers. Many of HeroScape's unique terrain pieces were packaged in small quantities and can still be quite pricey today. No. <laughs> <laughs> With a good chunk of change, you're only gonna get a couple of little trees. So we improvised to make our game epic with a trip to the craft store, double-sided tape, and a dream. This guy's too big, but I really like him. <laughs> they have the Great Lakes too, but they have like an Everglades too. Yeah, he's, he's too a... big to be a hero. <laughs> but he's Are grumpy. You serious? Ooh, yeah, he's way too big to be no. a hero. <laughs> we wanted to incorporate NPCs into the game gator people, which come from the mother gator and the father gator, renaming this Morrow character, protects her in the swamp. The Morrow, now gator people, also dwell in our cities with gator politicians. Nigo Saw will control your mind. Since most of the Marvel characters are overpowered, the only one which we could have on our team is the Stop. Silver Surfer, who has to be recruited down at the beach mid-game. Whoa, is that the Silver Surfer? <laughs> <laughs> but all of the other Marvel characters, they're guarding Orlando Land. Doctor Doom, Spider-Man, and the Hulk guard their rides. Will Thanos and Iron Man, the stars of the highest grossing movie of all time, lead the Disney litigation team? Oh my God, they're called the Krav Magra agents. <laughs> 
That's awesome. The goal of the game is to clear the lower part of the map of Gator people, capture the flag at the top of the castle, and return it to City Hall, making Florida yours. The bald eagle and the snail are both quick travel options. In order to speed the game up, Nico, our quasi-dungeon master, decided to use the eagle to start taking sacrifices up to the dragon to speed up the game. Why is this guy here? <laughs> what? No! He goes, he goes. <laughs> Charlie! We wrote multiple lines of dialogue, which would be triggered through a roll of a 20-sided die, and we can only place and move three characters a turn as per the master game rules, which is why it took so long. The board and both of our armies were just massive, but Nico, Savannah, and I had a blast putting our own scenario together, which is what I think makes HeroScape so special. Well, I want Vinny in. Yeah, he's dead. We definitely played with a little bit of Dungeons and Dragons energy. Whoops. Wait until I tell you what happens next. Excellent. The dragon that governs us, please eat me so I can serve my country. Despite performing very well, in 2008, Hasbro decided to shift HeroScape to another one of their subsidiaries, Wizards of the Coast, who was not very enthusiastic about having to take on a new brand. The same year they were given HeroScape, Wizards of the Coast was busy releasing the Windows Vista of Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition. More HeroScape master sets and expansions were planned, but after the Wizards takeover, HeroScape was basically rebranded to a Dungeons and Dragons game. While both fans and developers were frustrated about the change in direction, making HeroScape just like an extension of the Dungeons and Dragons universe, designer and community member Colby Truth Dosh offered a sobering explanation for the brand integration. Wizards would have killed the HeroScape brand three waves and a master set ago had someone over there not had the highly controversial idea to reuse D&D minis to lower the cost threshold of publishing new HeroScape products. They were literally reusing existing figures and rebranding them under HeroScape. No sh**, it was a controversial decision. While I do kind of appreciate how bashing Marvel and Dungeons and Dragons together can kind of be in the spirit of HeroScape, the rebranding of the entire game to complement the Dungeons and Dragons brand really moved the game away from its time travel setting. But the official explanation from Wizards offered to the HeroScape community really explained it all. We have chosen to focus our business efforts efforts on our core brands. If that doesn't just summarize the entire landscape of pop culture nowadays, I don't know what does. Though just last year, Hasbro did try to revive the game with another subsidiary of theirs, Avalon Hill, through a crowdfunding campaign hosted on Hasbro's very own HasLab website. New figures and terrain was showcased, but unfortunately the campaign ended having hit just over half of its 8,000 investor goal. Avalon Hill sent out a message to all HeroScape fans stating, HeroScape as a project will be shelved and there are no current plans to attempt a resurrection at this time. Honestly, with all of Hasbro's and Wizards' controversial decisions surrounding both Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons these days, I'm kind of happy that HeroScape has ultimately been left the fan community rather than the company that screwed over the game in the first place. Although I do wish the best for all of the developers. If you want to watch our full Florida game playthrough as well as hear more about how we created our own home brew game for this, please check out our HeroScape video on the Billion B-Side channel. It's a nasty and dangerous place, and some things may surprise you about it. See ya!